here's what the Lord spoke to me in my time of of prayer. He said, America, you're sitting on a time bomb. A powder keg of destruction awaits you, yet you have no cares, no concerns, for you are invincible and resilient, you say. You sit as a queen, and no worries about tomorrow, because you foolishly think you hold and mold your tomorrows. But I tell you this day, no man nor nor nation is promised tomorrow and uh, in eternity for totality. I alone am the Alpha and the Omega. I alone set up kings and remove them. I alone have created heaven and earth and the fullness thereof, and I will have my way. For it is written, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess who I am. To my church, resist the nationalistic pride that is nothing more than propaganda designed to deceive you into falsely believing you are winning a war that has only just begun and is designed It is designed to bring the entrance of the darkest days of humanity. Don't choose sides based on the side in which you abide. Choose life. Choose truth. And see it as I see it. Very powerful words from the Lord. Take them to him in prayer. The title of this message is called Time Bomb called Time Bomb. There is no doubt about it. We're standing upon a powder keg of destruction in our nation as it has been prophesied and promised in the Word of God concerning the end times and concerning nations that turn their back on God, including individuals. And one of the things that blinds and darkens the minds of the American mindset is because we live in a society where we believe it can't happen to us. We, we are preached to, whether it's through our pastors or through its commercialization or through our politics, we are told that we are the greatest of all and nothing by any means can harm us, that we have a just cause in everything that we do, and there's no harm that can come to us because By the way, God is with us because God is on our money. Can somebody say amen? And it's the reality that is permeating right now throughout the entire nation and the body of Christ. And it's been this way for a long time. This isn't anything new. We've been preaching this message for many years, warning folks of the impending doom and destruction that is coming to a nation that is backslidden, that has rejected God. And so my assignment this morning is to continue this thread and this message of warning the body of Christ to not get caught up in the propaganda of what's happening in our lives and things that are happening around us, telling us that everything's going to work out just perfect, that we can continue down the merrily way of sin and unrighteousness, and God is going to wink at this and say, no, uh, these, are, these are my beloved ones. We're just going to go ahead and give them a pass and let everybody else go into perdition. The truth of the matter is that God is going to use the nations of the world to batter this country and to bring this country to its knees as Mystery Babylon. There is no doubt about it, and we are going through those processes even as I speak. So the title, again, is called Time Bomb. I want you to go to Jeremiah chapter 13. Jeremiah chapter 13. You should have a bookmark already there. In fact, I was reminded we were there a couple weeks ago. And again, I don't have messages on a Rolodex or a message from headquarters that tells me, okay, it's springtime and the lilies are popping up and now it's time for you to pull out this message about bunny foo-foo and, uh, come on somebody, and Goldilocks and, and what have you. I listen to what the Spirit of the Lord says concerning the hour 
And we have not, we have not stopped warning this nation. We are just trying to get people prepared for what is coming and what is happening even now. And even in that process, not to forget the great harvest. The, the balance of a watchman is to not only warn, but also to work. Let me try it again. Not only to, to warn, but to work, get to work and do what we need to do. And we're doing that here at Ignited Church. And I'm so glad that you're a part of that. Are you there? And Jeremiah, I had to give you a minute. Jeremiah chapter 13, I want to begin in verse 7. Because when I looked at this, I said, Lord, you know, I've, I've preached this thing every way I possibly can. Maybe next time I'll do it backwards. But he said, I want you to, to emphasize on, on, on a specific thing here, and that is pride. Pride. Because pride is the poison that is going to destroy and is destroying this nation and will destroy you and will destroy me. If it is not unchecked, if it is not put under subjection and submission to God and humility, pride is very dangerous. Pride doesn't have to be the person wearing the nicest clothes in the room. Pride can be proudful just in who you are, no matter what you look like, no matter what you drove up in, no matter what your life is. Is anybody here? And so the message time bomb, if I can give you an introduction, is that we are dealing with so many things that have not gone away since an election. There are so many undermining, underlining things that are happening right now. There are so many fuses that have been lit, whatever it may be, whether it's societal, whether it's institutional, political, military, it makes no difference. There are so many things that are waiting to cause an ignition point. And right now, the world is on fire. Let me try that again. The world is on fire. They'll try to make it cinematic and make it just in one place and say, well, it's just happening right here in this part of the world, and we're containing it over here in Ukraine, and we've got the big bear by the, by the nap of the neck, and we've got everything under control, when the reality is that we have enemies that are in the camp. We have enemies that are sworn against this very democracy, this very nation. We have enemies that God has allowed allowed to breach, God has allowed them to breach the defenses of our country. And this is a spiritual message, nothing, nothing of a political message whatsoever. It is a spiritual concept that when a nation falls into pride, the fall is next. And we are being mesmerized and pushed away from the reality of what is happening in our country and what is happening in our world. Are you there? Verse 7. Let's go to verse 7. Then I went to Euphrates and digged and took the girdle from the place where I had hid. Yeah, I had hid it. So God says, Jeremiah, I want you to go. I want you to take them, them underoos. I want you to go over there to Euphrates. I want you to take a pathway that's an illustrated sermon to show Israel, Judah, where they're headed. They're headed where? To Babylon. They're headed to captivity. The message for America has not changed. We are in captivity, and we're headed into deeper captivity. And behold, the girdle was marred, and it was profitable for nothing. In other words, you don't put on them old things. They weren't worth anything. There was no value to them. There was no support in them. There was nothing to behold. And verse 8, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Thus saith the Lord, After this manner will I mar the pride of Judah and the great pride of Jerusalem. So, Jeremiah, I want you to take this illustrated sermon, and I want you to show those in Judah, and I want you to show those in, in Jerusalem, show them this marred pair of Britches. I want you to show them this girdle and tell them that this is exactly what it looks like to me, your pride, and I'm going to mar it. I'm going to destroy it. I'm going to cause it to deteriorate right before your very eyes. I'm going to make this happen, and there's nothing that you can do about it. You can't stop it. You can't pray it out. You can't worship it out. You can't give offerings and sacrifices. You can't po be political about it and elect somebody to change it. 
The only way it could ever happen, Judah and Jeremiah and Jerusalem, is if you would repent, but you won't repent. And the message is for us today in America, we are on a time bomb. We are standing and sitting on a time bomb because we will not repent of our sins and we sit and we boast and say we're the greatest nation of the world calling everybody else butchers and calling everybody else dictators and all these different things throwing the very rocks of offense towards others when there's a boulder coming back at us. Is anybody here today not trying to justify or to measure or anything, but to make a point in the eyes of God, he has the justice. He has the scales of righteousness. And it's not based on opinions. It's not based on politics. It's not based on military. It's based on the word of God. And God says, if you're full of pride, I'm going to deal with you. And I will deal with you in the way that I want to deal with you. And when I'm done dealing with you, I'll go deal with her. And when I'm done dealing with her, I'll go deal with him. God is an equal opposite opportunity offender. I saw me try that again. God is an equal opportunity offender. He will judge those who need to be judged because he is the righteous judge and he sees righteously. And the very danger that we have is to be so so full of pomp and circumstance and so full of pride and chanting nationalistic chants while the people are dying and going into eternity. I'm talking to the church and and voting and and bloating, if you will, as well, saying, look what we have done. Look Look what we've accomplished. And we are so wonderful without seeing it the way God sees it. You must see it prophetically. You must see it through the eyes of God. You must see it through the Word of God, through the lens of the Word of God, prophetically, not patriotically, not nationalistically, not red, white, and blue. Come on, somebody. And this is part of our problem today, that we don't know how to rightly discern the Word of God and rightly discern what God is doing in the Word and in the world. This is a setup. What you are watching take place right now, it is not a small little country against the big big bear and all these different things that is being promoted. You ever seen a boxing match? It's it's promoted as, you know, the thriller and vanilla, I can't even say it. You know, it's the big old fight, man. This this is it. It gets all drummed up, pay-per-view and all that. I mean, I don't know what I'm talking about. Thriller and manila. And you know what? It doesn't turn out to be too much so. And even if it does, in this book, the difference is this, that God said, I'm going to use the enemies to destroy you. And we're looking at this thing from, from, from a just a, the wrong perspective. We are in war. Let me try this again, folks. We are in war. America doesn't realize it. I've made this announcement back in 2014. I will have to go back and find the archives. 2014, 2015, World War III already started. It's already been going on. This is just now on the grounds. This is just now in your face. This is now the reverberation of what's been happening all these years, and nobody wanted to believe it. No, nah, man, you know, we know peace, man, give peace a chance. Yeah, well, they're going to take a piece here and a piece there. And that's what's been happening, piece by piece. And it's been happening and happening and happening. I've, I've gone over statistics and how many wars we're involved in, how much the black, uh, the black budget we're involved in. I've told you about special operations and black operations and operations we don't even know about. All this stuff is happening around the world, and the jostling has been taking place, but the people are sitting and watching it on television just getting the superficial aspect of it all. In other words, this is different. This is a shift in the world. This is the moving of giants and players for the final days of what the Bible declares. Is it the end? No, not yet. But it's happening right before our very eyes. And if we think we're going to sit back in a lazy chair with a big gulp, come on somebody, in a foot-long sandwich and watch the world go to war and it not bother us, put the crack pipe down. Stop hallucinating. Come on, somebody. Get, some, get you a can of reality and start chugging that because the reality is it's, it's going to affect us, and it's coming to the home front. You ain't seen anything yet. 
You haven't seen anything yet. You haven't seen terrorism yet. You haven't seen hacking yet. You haven't seen blackouts yet. You haven't seen the coming to America and the food shortages and the gas shortages. I'm prophesying to you and all these things that are coming. They're coming, they're coming, they're coming. Am I afraid? No. Am I still going to reach the nations? Yes. Yes. Am I still going to sow and give? Yes. Am I still going to be a tither and love God? Yes. No matter what it takes, no matter what it costs, Christ be magnified in me. Come on, somebody. That's, that's why we sing these songs. That's why we put that in the DNA of Ignited Church, that we'll fight and we'll work. We'll worship and we'll work. We're not worried about it. But we're going to warn people and tell them, hey, this is the deal. This is real. This is not a test. I said, this is not a test. But if you listen to the propagandists, including Grandpa Joe, who almost got us into a deeper war with his mouth yesterday. This is no game. This is no game. This is the exact truth of what's happening in our world today. And this is reality, and words do matter. And you can't act that way. You can't say certain things. You can't do certain things and act in pride that it's not going to bother the rest of the world. The rest of the world does care. The rest of the world does have a problem with us. And so we have to be mindful of that. Watch this, verse 9. Thus saith the Lord, after this manner will I mar the pride of Judah and the great pride of Judah. Why is it the great pride of Jerusalem? Because Jerusalem had the, the, the presence of God. They had the law. They had the pomp and the circumstance. They had the religiosity. They had the rituals. They had the trinkets. They had the priest. They had the promises. They had the testimony and all the other things. And God says, your great pride. See, it's a very dangerous thing to walk around and say, well, God's on our side. I said, God is on our side because what we're doing is righteous. This was a righteous cause. How many of y'all heard that? Mark and I, we served together. Actually, we Fort Seal, Oklahoma, didn't even know we served near each other. And, you know, they, everything they, they told you when you was in training, it was the right thing to do. We're going to bomb Iran. Yay! <laughs> then we're headed to Lebanon. Woohoo! Come on. Rather be dead than red. Remember that? That was ingrained in your head, you know, the Soviets and all these different things and that mantra, and every country has that. I understand that's how you prepare the psyche for war and make men into military machines. I understand that. But this mindset concerning religiosity is a very dangerous thing, a very dangerous thing. And that's what's what's happening today in America. You're watching churches choose sides. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be very straight up with you. It is very dangerous to have the cancel culture in America, in the church. There's people that won't talk to Russians and don't want to deal with Russians and cursing everybody who's Russian. Well, what, where in the world do you get the higher authority to do so? We're dealing with a man and his people and the authority of his government that God is going to deal with. Let God play that thing out. But the people Come on now. Well, they ought to overthrow. They ought to do this. We ought to have done a lot of that ourselves. Come on. Is anybody here today? See, we can sit there and point fingers back and forth. And how come you let this happen in your country? Well, how come you let this happen in your country? Because they have the guns and they're in power. Because they have the guns and they're in power. I mean, come on. It goes back and forth. And the church is over there. Rah, rah, shish, kabal, left. Rah, rah, shish, kabal, right. We're to be right in the middle saying, look, I love both, and I understand prophetically what's happening. I don't want nobody to die and go to hell. I don't want no war. I don't want no torment. I don't want any of these things. But I'm going to help my brother and my sister because I'm called to serve the church. Is anybody here today? And that's, that's what we've lost, and you can see it in the church, and it's ripping the church apart. We've got to mend this thing together. We got to look at our brothers and sisters. See, we, we, we're still fighting race here. I'm, I'm going to break this microphone flow. You buy me another one. We still fight. We can barely hang out with white and black folk on Sunday morning. The most segregated place in America is church on Sunday morning. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You go in Walmart, we're all mixing together, bumping, and, you know, doing what we need to do to shop. But you come Sunday morning, phew, it's like pepper and, and, and soap. You ever done pepper and soap trick before in school? 
Huh? It's the truth. It's the truth. And then we say God bless and we love each other and all that, and we can't even hang out with each other. You know I'm telling you the truth. So the church of, the church of Jesus Christ, the body of Christ, we can't afford any racism and any schisms in us. we got to look at this thing prophetically and look at this thing according to the word of God because it is a time bomb. And it's going to do more exposure to the church. And the church doesn't get this. The church sometimes is so naive because God allows these earth-shaking things to take place just to see who his people really are, just to see how you really will act. You know, the testing in your life and the testing in my life many times comes just to test me and you to find out who we are and what we know about what we say we know. Come on, somebody. God will allow you to only go so far into trouble and turmoil and things like that. He'll allow you to go so far into testing. He's not going to destroy you. Say, how do you know? Look at Job. Oh, I got to go. Watch this. Watch this. Verse 10. This evil people which refuse to hear my words. Again, this is one of the indictments that we preached about before. These evil people which refuse to hear my words. I got to hear the word of the Lord. I don't want to hear what CNN has to say or Fox News or Grandpa Joe. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care what they're saying at the UN. I don't care what they're saying at the Kremlin. I don't care what they're saying over in Beijing. I want to hear what the Lord is saying about the word. Now, it does matter about what people are saying. Don't get me wrong. But I want to understand what's being said behind their words. What's the power behind their words? What's the spirit behind their words? As I mentioned to you earlier, World War III has already begun. See, wars don't happen overnight. Read history. Read history. We're seeing a tremendous parallel between what's happening now and what happened to the run-up of WW2, even with WW1. These are very eerie, similar uh, precepts and concepts and ideals and incidents and events. And it's happening right before our very eyes. But yet we don't want to hear the word of the Lord. He said this evil people, they don't want to hear my words. They walk in the imagination of their hearts, and they walk after other gods to serve them and to worship them, shall even be as this girdle which is good for nothing. So in other words, I'm going to mar the folks, the people, the pride, their dreams, everything that they're setting their hearts and hands to do because they refuse to follow my words and they worship after other gods. America has not built back better. America has not gone the way of moral righteousness. We're going further and deeper into it. Our streets are becoming war zones where it's hard to even walk down the streets alone without having some type of protection or some type of internal direction of not being at a certain place at a certain time. Come on, somebody. Our schools are becoming more dangerous where drugs are flowing in and out like the cartels in Mexico and, and, the, and just the cesspool. I could sit here all morning long about the cesspool of what's happening in our nation. It is a time bomb. But yet, we thump our chests, we chant USA, and we act as though there's nothing wrong and everything's fine with us, and it's all the other bad people around us. And we are the cowboy with the white hat. And we're riding the white steaming stallion into victory. When the truth of the matter is, God sees past that veneer. He sees past all the verbiage. And he looks at the heart. And he has a plan. I want you to write that down somewhere where you can read it. He has a plan. And the plan is in your hand, and it's called the Bible. It's going to play out, folks, exactly the way that he declared and decreed it. And we must prepare ourselves for the plan of God. There's a time bomb ticking in America today. Verse 11, for as the girdle cleaveth to the loins of a man. 
Talk about intimacy. So have I caused to cleave unto me the whole house of Israel and the whole house of Judah, saith the Lord, that they might be unto me for a people and for a name and for a praise and for a glory, but they would not hear. I wanted you close to me, house of God. Church of America, body of Christ, universal. I wanted you close to me. I, I wanted you to be near me. I wanted you to feel the warmth of my presence. I wanted you to hear my voice. And when I speak, I wouldn't have to holler because when you're close, you can hear even the whisper. I wanted to be intimate with you, but you refused because you followed after the ways of the world. You followed after the propaganda, and you'd rather hear what they're saying on late night news and through internet chatter than you would to hear the heart of your Savior. I tried to bring you close to me, but you refused. Watch this, verse 12. Therefore thou shalt speak unto them this word, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Every bottle shall be filled with wine. Now watch what he does here prophetically, and they shall say unto thee, do we not certainly know that every bottle shall be filled with wine? Jeremiah, this place you're looking at and these people of Judah and of Jerusalem are very wealthy, very prosperous people, and we understand what goes inside of a bottle of wine. It's wine, isn't it? And we deserve the finest of wine and the finest of things because we are the holders of that bottle. Jeremiah, we're fully aware. Jeremiah, did you not understand that the vineyards from which this wine came from, the very vines we grew, it was our very toil and our very hands and hard work that brought this produce to our table. We're fully aware of it. Jeremiah, thanks for the obvious. Is anybody here? In essence, a Ben Faircloth translation, but exactly how smart Alec they were being to Jeremiah. They rebuked the whole girdle thing and the underoos. They didn't care about the underwear illustrated sermon. So he tried to bring them to another reality through another venue of illustrated sermons. And then they got even smarter with him. Just like the church has been getting smarter. And coming up with another answer, and, well, it's just this reason, and, oh, no, we're not in the end times. So no, no, not at all. No, no, that wasn't a meteorite that just went by the size of the Empire State Building. No, no, Mark, you're just hysterical. No, 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 earthquakes and tornadoes and things out of season, and come on. Oh, I have no fear that they're wanting to go digital currency in America. What could go wrong with that? <laughs> what is wrong with them knowing every transaction I've ever made? Come on. Would you like to know how many times I flushed? Are you here today? <laughs> this, is, this is what I'm talking about. And people will play it off, and they just snooze it off, and they walk it off, and they laugh it off, and they drink it off, and they shoot it off. Anything they can do to ignore the reality of what's happening and what they did to Jeremiah was, Jeremiah, we're aware of these bottles. We understand what happens. You know, at night, the moon comes out. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Watch this. They're filled with wine. We, we, we know what they're filled with. Verse 13, then thou shalt say unto them. I love God's answer. Just when you start getting smart like a little whippersnapper. Some of y'all don't know what that is, old whippersnapper. <laughs> heard that all my life. I don't know what it means, but I'm a whippersnapper. <laughs> you ever heard stuff like that? Be, Mom, Dad call you something like, what? You're scarred for life. <laughs> what are you? I'm a whippersnapper. A whippersnapper. Anyways, that's good stuff. That better be called something worse, right? And so say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will fill all the inhabitants of this land, even the kings that sit upon David's throne, and the priests, 
and the prophets and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with drunkenness. Oh, yeah, there's going to be wine inside of that bottle, son. But what you folks don't understand is while you chugging and drinking and partying, that wine is going to make you intoxicated. That wine is going to make you drunk. That wine is going to take your discernment away. That wine is going to make that ugly thing look good to you. I'm on somebody. Uh, you know, that, that, that old Ford that ain't got no wheels, but you think it's got wheels. And you got a deal. Come on. Come on now. Go back to your past and think about some of the dumb stuff you ever made. Decisions. Yeah, it's cool. and this is what it means. In context, I'm being funny, but in context, that's exactly what it means. He says, I'm going to let you get so drunk on what you think you earned and what you told for and toiled and worked for and sowed and all these things. I'm going to let you get drunk on your prosperity, and when you come down to the end of it, you ain't going to know what hit you upside your head. And that's exactly what's happening in our country today. We have been so lulled to sleep and so drunk with our prosperity that as things are getting harder and harder, people are losing their minds. I hate to be the one to say these things, though I'm not the only one, but I've warned and prophesied and told the nation, you're going to see more murders and murder suicides. You're going to see more gang-related uh, uh, gang killings and, and all these different things. You're going to see cartels spill over into America. All this stuff you're going to see. Why? It's because of the cesspool of our sin and the pride that we had that makes us drunk. And then we're going to thump our chest overseas. And I understand, I'm not getting into all of the things of this, but we thump our chest and act as though we've done nothing when we've got so many problems here. You know what amazes me about all this stuff? And I'm all about defense. I'm a former military man and all those different things. And God bless America and kiss grandma. I mean, you know what I mean? I, but let me tell you something. There is so much money being poured in to foreign countries right now in defense that we can't even defend the defenseless here. We got people that are hungry. We got people, we got veterans that are dying daily by suicide because we can't fix them. We broke them overseas and we can't fix them. And we sending money all over to make some more broken people. Is anybody here today? But then we make it all so patriotic and so wonderful and get the flag out and everybody, you know, it's insanity. It's the propaganda that I'm trying to preach and teach and tell people to get away from. Look at the Word of God. Well, can't you be prideful of your country? Yeah, you can be prideful of your country, but you need to be mindful of your Lord, mindful of the Word of God, and careful of pride. Careful. I'm not saying to lay everything down and be defenseless, lay, put your feet up like a puppy in the air. That's the opposite of what these messages are. That's what people try to criticize. But the reality is this. We have to be prophetically pointed and prophetically sharpened and recognize and realize what's happening in this world and look at things with discernment. If not, we're going to be, we're going to be messed up and we're not going to be ready for what's going to happen and we're not going to be on God's side. I'm serious, folks. And, I, and I, I'm not a social justice type of guy but I'm going to tell you, there's a whole lot of money that's going out the door. Of course, we're printing it. I said, we're just printing it. Oh, it's monopoly. What does it matter? It's unsustainable. That's why we're going to go to digital. We'll crash everything, and we'll just go to digital. Just wipe everything out, and everybody gets a new day, and we'll go digital. That's what it's all about. We know that. The Word is right there before us. But what we need to do now is help those that are helpless and at least protest and say some things that make common sense to folks. I'm just trying to get some people off the, off the propaganda boat right now. That's all I'm trying to do, sending all that money. And I got, we got people that are starving, young children that are starving. I don't remember what the food bank numbers are in Georgia, but they're not that good for people that, that need food. Just look what happened during the pandemic. They were having to set up food places for the kids to get food. Because school was shut down. Has anybody here got a brain? We build multi-million dollar schools and still put pup tents outside for them. 
just about travel trailers. Oh, it's population growth. No, you don't know how to plan. Oh, I forgot the lottery is supposed to handle all this. Man, I forget. (laughs) See, you get me down that road, man, I'll start kicking every golden calf I can find. It's a time bomb, y'all. It's a time bomb. I want you to enjoy. See, you messing up my my springtime. I want you to enjoy life and do the best you can. I believe you can swing an axe and have your weapon in your hand and work and, and still smile while you're doing it. But you can't go to sleep, not with a time bomb ticking. Are you still here? I'm going to fill it with drunkenness. And I will dash them one against the nether, even the fathers and the sons together, saith the Lord. That's what's happening. Confusion. Lack of respect happening in the houses. Lack of respect happening in, in businesses. Lack of respect happening in the house of God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring confusion. Generation against generation. Well, it's your fault because you guys are older. It's your fault because you're lazier and younger. Help me now. Come on. Jesus said he's going to come back in the spirit of Elijah and he's going to do what? Turn the heart of the fathers to the sons and the sons to the fathers. There's going to be a reconciliation. And I will put, I will not pity, nor spare, nor have mercy, but destroy them. See, this is the part of God we don't like. This is the part you won't find in Sunday morning service today. Because he's a God of love. Yes. He's a God of pansies and love. Come on, chocolate hearts and kisses. Nobody goes to hell. Mm -mm. Not with God. You know it's the truth. I mean, you walk in some, per- some churches, man, you about slip on the love. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, what was that? With love. You're loved here. Oh, okay, good. Um, never mind. I almost said something. I'll get me in trouble. Let, let, me, let, me, let me just move on. Come on now. This is what we don't. I don't focus on God and his anger, but I got to realize it's there. It's kind of like being married. I love my wife, but I understand there's a button I don't push. Somebody say amen. There's just certain things you don't say, Sarah. There's certain things you don't do. You, you walk tall, but you carry a small stick. <laughs> Until she walks out and you walk tall and get a big stick. My children say amen. But hear ye, watch us, verse 5. Hear ye and give ear. Be not proud. Be not proud. For the Lord has spoken. If God has spoken, then we don't have the right to be proud. Proud in this instance instance means to resist what he said. My pride, what I think, my opinion, my theology... My economy, my, my upbringing, my education, everything that has made me and what I think cannot violate what God has said. Denominations, organizations, schools of religiosity, seminaries and cemeteries, all these different places of dead theology. None of that can get in the way of what God says. It doesn't matter what an administration says. It doesn't matter what an administration and a nation and a state department feels is is the pointed direction of the future. I have to listen to what God says about a situation. Hear you and give ear. Be not proud, for the Lord has spoken. Give glory to the Lord your God, because he, he, he calls darkness, and before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains, and while you look for light, he turn it into the shadow of death and make it gross darkness. Who, who's going to do that? God will. God said, get the pride out. Get these things removed from your life, because if you don't do that, then the light of the truth, the light of righteousness will be removed from you. And it will go from darkness to gross darkness. 
That's what we're watching happening in America as it decays. We're watching it as we're in a coma, the things that are happening to us, and the time bomb is ticking, and somebody has to warn. We have to warn our families and our friends. You say, how do you warn them, Pastor, with with so many things? You just warn them with truth. You just warn them and say, don't get caught up in the message of propaganda or the message of the White House or the message of this or that. Get into the message of the Word of God. Stay focused on what God has to say and make your preparations accordingly. So give glory to the Lord your God. Verse 16 again, for he causes darkness and before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains, and while you look for light, he churn it into the shadow of death, and he make it gross darkness. But if you will not hear it, my soul shall weep in secret places for your what? Pride. Pride. And my eyes shall weep sore and run down with tears because the Lord's flock is carried away captive. No doubt captivity is coming. And Jeremiah is warning them. Jeremiah is interceding, the weeping prophet, and he's saying it's coming. It's going to happen to you. I'm telling you it's going to happen to you, but you refuse to listen to me. There are so many prophetic voices, and maybe one day I'll do a compilation of prophetic voices that I've trusted over the years that speak of what's taking place right now in America, and that will take place. Verifiable prophets, not YouTube wannabes, not guessers, not connectors, but true prophets who prophesied on nothing and saw something and said something when nothing was happening. Those are the kind of prophets. Those are real prophets. That's a real prophet. Let me try that one more time. That is a real prophet that prophesies to you something that's not even in the air. It's not even here. It's not even there. And they see it from God. But this is exactly the condition. He says, I see it. I see the captivity. I see the destruction. I see this happening to your children. I see the dashing of the fathers and the sons. And and I see the raping. And I see all these wars and destruction in your country. You're going into captivity. Verse 18, Jeremiah brings it now to the king and to the queen. Say unto the king and to the queen, humble yourselves and sit down. That's a good word right there. Someone ought to send that up to Washington. Humble yourselves and sit down. Isn't that something? How come we never hear nobody on the National Day of Prayer go up there and say, Sir, ma'am, just, just sit down. Just, just sit. Just sit before God and hush up. Because the more you talk, the messier you're making it. Humble yourselves and sit down. For your principalities shall come down. It means your power, your authority. Even the crown of your glory. The cities of the south shall be shut up, and none shall open them. Can I tell you something? This happened. Jeremiah prophesied it, and it happened. They went into captivity. These exact words that were prophesied came to pass exactly as God said they would, but they refused to listen. Judah shall be carried away captive of all of it. And shall be wholly carried away captive. And Judah was. We prophesy and we tell you there's an economic holocaust coming to America, and people just don't believe it. Some of it's because the false prophets and watchmen have given false signs and early warnings, and there's been miscalculations, there always is in the prophetic long as repentance is there, you can fix things. But we've been like the, the frog in the pot, if you will, with this whole thing. 
It's been happening. It's boiling and boiling, and we don't recognize what's happening to us. But it's coming. These things will rock our world, and it's by design. And that is what you need to write down anywhere in your Bible, in your messages, where you hear about an economic holocaust and a downturn that is going to be very, very horrible. You need to write, it is planned. It is by design. And God is still on his throne. I said God is still on. That's the part of the prophetic message that gets so watered down. And part of the propaganda of the enemy that gets so loud. I'm not here to give you the devil's propaganda. I'm here to tell you that God is in control, and he's going to take care of his people. He's going to make a way for his people, but we need to be like the ant and learn something and do something and be wise. And at the same time, I need to help my brothers and sisters who are in tribulation, who are already experiencing things that I'm going to experience. That's what we're doing. I see. I love when you catch that because that's a powerful truth. It's exactly what's happened. See, some things just got to come around the corner, don't they? And if you watch the world of what they're dealing with, you cannot sit back and say, oh, I'm so glad I live here. I mean, on one side, you are kind of glad that you live here. But on the other side, you need to say, Lord, let me help them. If I were there, I would help them. It's called compassion. And the church's got to have this. We've got to have compassion. And I'm so glad you guys do here. Watch this, verse 20. I'm, I'm trying to close. Lift up your eyes and behold them that come from the north. There's a whole message about coming from the north. Where is the flock that was given thee, thy beautiful flock? What will thou say when they shall punish thee? For thou hast taught them to be captains and chiefs over thee. In other words, your sin has given them the access and has given them the right. What you've done to other nations, America, has given them the training to do what they're going to do to us. I, I feel like I'm cutting through the thickest veneer I possibly can today because this propaganda is so heavy in the United States right now. I feel it prophetically, Mark. I know, I know I'm fighting against a lot today. Because they have just been pounding and pounding and pounding the American folks with this whole uh, we win uh, scenario. And we're winning. And we're this. And we're that. But I'm telling you right now, lift up your eyes. Behold, them that come from the north. Our enemies are coming, folks. What will thou say when he shall punish thee? For thou hast taught them to be captains. You did it. You allowed this to happen. So how do we let it happen? Shall I take the next two hours and talk about transgenderism and the LGB barbecue group and transvestites reading to our children and sex books in our schools and abortions and adultery and affairs and pornography and on and on it goes. Do we have that time today to just fellowship and chat? It's a time bomb. And I don't have the time, nor do you, for me to go over all the ills of our society, but they are deep, bridal deep. What will I say when they punish you? What are you, what are you going to say? Verse Verse 21. What will they say when they shall punish thee? For thou hast taught them to be captains and chiefs over thee. Shall not sorrows take thee as a woman in travail? Every woman has had a baby, you say, mm-hmm. Man acts so tough when the baby comes out. That's my boy right there. Look at that boy. He ain't done nothing. Mama's mascara is now on her ears. and <laughs> She ready to rip his head off. Men don't know nothing about travail. Women do. Come on, ladies. Birth pangs are upon the world today. You're watching it. What's happening in Ukraine, what's happening in Russia, you're watching birth pangs. The beginning of sorrows. 
You wait till it starts moving over into Jacob's troubles. See, this is when you need to be wide-eyed and fully awake. That's why you need to be right now alert because it will move over to Jacob's trouble. See, prophetically, we know this. But ignorantly in America, we don't know this. And it's sad to say because in the church, and now you got preachers that are going to try to play catch-up on the book of Revelation and on prophetic things. And be careful because they're going to mess a lot of it up because they're out of the timeline. And I don't have time to go back and teach on the timeline, but that's exactly the problem without, with being out of step with God and then trying to jump in and act like you know everything and be trendy with the times. Watch verse 22. And if thou shalt say in thine heart, wherefore come these things upon us? For the greatness of thine iniquity are thy skirts discovered. The greatness of thy iniquity. Again, I'm penetrating the hardness of the, uh, of the minds of a lot of Americans today. But they say, well, how can this happen? We're this, and we've done this, and we're standing up for righteousness. It's because of the greatness of thine iniquity. Sin is one thing. Everybody sins. Everybody makes a sin of omission or a sin of commission. Omission is something you did you didn't mean to do. Prayerlessness is a sin. The sin of commission is when I sin purposely. I looked at thought of, said of. Iniquity is I live in the sin of commission and omission. I constantly am a worker of iniquity. It's my character. I get you involved in sin. I'm a worker of iniquity. I work to get you into the pattern of sin. And this is the difference between somebody who says they're a believer and they're trying to live right than someone who's a worker of iniquity. The Bible says not even have fellowship with them. But that's a whole other story. Because they're workers of iniquity. There's no repentance in their heart. No matter how much you paint them righteous and no matter how they look righteous in church, they are still wolves in sheep's clothing. Don't have time. But because we can't discern that and we can't rightly discern the Word of God, we don't rightly discern people. This is good preaching today. Man, you get all kinds of stuff here. If I had some sports scores, I'd give them to you, but I don't. Because I don't give a rip. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Why do these things come upon us? Because you're iniquity. And I'm going to lift up your skirts. It's one thing to voluntarily, as a wife, lift up your skirt. It's a whole other thing when you're being violated by an opposing army. See, that's what whoredom does. Whoredom flaunts and whoredom says, well, I'll just, you know, show and do this. And Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. You look at the entertainment today, everything, shake, 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 shake your flow. Don't finish that. Casey and the Sunshine Man. Shake, 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 shake and bake, shake and bake. Mm-hmm. Now I'm really into it. Dun, dun, dun. And it's cool, man. Yeah, you, you know, you do. Yeah, it's, it's different when they put in a $100 bill. Come on, in the stocking. It's a whole other thing when there's 100 people there. Uh, see, I got I to cut that off. See, we don't want to talk like that, because, but, but this is exactly the way it is. You worked your iniquity, and you thought you were going to do another freak show, another fun show, another free show. And the Lord says, listen, you built yourself up. I'm going to allow them to come from the north. You taught them. You showed them exactly where the problem was. You gave them the access and the access code to the gate, and I'm going to let them come in because I'm going to deal with you. Your skirts are discovered. The heels made bare. Can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? I don't think so. You can bleach it all you want. You can get in a tanning booth for the rest of your life, but all you're going to get is brown and cancer. 
Is anybody here? Then you may also do good that are accustomed to do evil. He said, you ain't going to change. You won't change. Therefore, I scatter them as a stubble that passeth away by the wind of the wilderness. This is thy lot, the portion of thy what? measures from me, saith the Lord, because thou hast forgotten me. In other words, here's your payment. Here's the measurement. Here's what I'm going to give you because you've been a worker of iniquity. Here's the balance due to you. This is thy lot. This is the portion of thy measures from me, saith the Lord. Because thou hast forgotten me and trusted in falsehood, therefore I discover thy skirts upon thy face, and thy shame shall appear. See, he goes into it even in more detail, and he announces it again. He said, I'm going to show your nakedness. I'm going to show you how vulnerable you are. I'm going to show you how weak you are. See, this is what I'm very concerned about, and I've, I've had a lot of conversations with my family. And we talk about social, geopolitical situations that deal with the world and deal with missions. We're constantly talking about things like this. And at the beginning of this conflict over in Ukraine, there's been a lot of uneven reporting that has shifted towards the West. Very heavy. And it's not to build an enemy to be greater than they should. That is always not wise. But there is something called discernment that makes you say something's not right here. And there is another shoe that is coming. There is more in the <laughs> slingshot, if you will, <clears throat> excuse me, of the enemy than we know. All full force and all full punches have not been pulled and released yet. And that ought to make you concerned. And there's a reason for it. This is why the words that were elevated over in Poland just the other day are very reckless and dangerous. But show you the heart of ignorance. And show you the heart of a prideful government, an administration that really speaks of their heart. And it's very dangerous very dangerous. Because remember this, if one nation can proclaim and declare that we will change your regime and your administration, then it can be said the same about ours. And if you ever want a stoking of a fire, then use the words of politicians and you'll have an inferno. I'm closing with verse 27. And I have seen thy adulteries and thy nyings and the lewdness of thy whoredom. He, he continuously goes into this. It all begins with pride. and The abominations on the hills and the fields. The Lord says, I've seen it all. I know what's going on in your schools, your institutions. I know what's happening. I know what's happening in the hallowed halls of Congress. I know what's happening in the secured rooms of the White House I know what's happening in the Kremlin. I know what's happening all around. I'm fully aware. I'm orchestrating and I'm watching this. But specifically, specifically to America, he says, I'm watching you. I'm watching you. Why is God so concerned about America? Why are these prophetic words so powerful for America? Is because we were like ancient Jerusalem, ancient Israel, ancient Judah. We have, we have the glory of God the law, if you will, all these same things that surrounded them. And they took it, and they polluted it, and they profaned it, and God judged them. And that's exactly what he's doing now to America, and that is exactly what he's going to do to America. We are standing on a time bomb. If you're watching me right now and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, Listen, you don't have to get caught up in all the destruction and be unprotected. In fact, you don't have to walk through life without the joy of life, which is Jesus Christ. I pray that you'd make him your Lord and Savior today. All you have to do is repent, ask him into your heart.
confess your sin. And the Bible promises us that your name will be written in the Lamb's book of life. If you're backslidden, today is the day. Come on, it's spring. Make a new season. Just repent and say, Lord, I turn my back on all that stuff. I'm ready for a new day in you. And I ask for you to live in me large. Help me to do so. Father, thank you for this message today, Time Bomb. Help us to recognize and realize, Lord God, what's happening around us. And not to choose the sides in which we abide. But choose the way you see it. Choose life and choose truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, I love you. I will see you Wednesday for Revelation Road.